Well, welcome to another race analysis. This one is from the archives. This is the Super Series in 2020. Uh, this one's one I've wanted to do for a while, but just haven't found the time. Uh, I'm still racing for Port Adelaide at this point. The black and white kit, uh, Alastair, is just in front of me here. Main rivals are uh, Alex Jarvis in the Norwood red kit and uh, basically all of Rocket. Uh, this is the last year I raced for Port Adelaide. I signed up with Rocket the next year. So we've got Alex Jarvis just on my left shoulder here. Um, this is a course I've got a bit of a love-hate relationship with. It's the Wallaroo Hell of the North Road Race. It's got about uh, 60 k's total and about 20 k's of that are on rough gravel, hard pack roads. I've had a couple of races that I've done pretty well in, but I've also had a couple of races that I've ended up leaving some skin on the road. So um, it's one I always go into with a bit of nerves. Uh, I won the first round, this is round two, so I'm in the leader's jersey. And we've had a teammate in the break for the first 40 k's. He's still up the road at this point, so we haven't had to do any work. We're coming up here to the turn off to the first gravel sector. Uh, we had intended to be right up the front at this point, but the pace kind of picked up, and as you can see, we're six or eight wide across the road. So unfortunately, when we come into this corner, um, I'm not really in a great place. And the problem with that is the pace kicks off as soon as we hit the gravel. It's the obvious place to attack. It's much harder to stay in the wheels. Uh, and people don't want to be in the wheels. It's easier to be on the front in a place like this. So the pace really goes up. We're about a minute into the gravel, um, and I can see there's a few gaps opening up ahead. I get lucky and see a Norwood rider coming past and hop on his wheel. Um, this guy gives me a really nice tow all the way to the front. Um, but you can really see the difference it makes having a good line in the centre and sort of weaving over on the right. Uh, this guy does a really, really impressive turn and he really does close quite a big gap for me here. Um, I reckon without this guy's work this might have been race over for me. Um, what I didn't realise is that people weren't following me. So we got across and then that was essentially what, what turned into the first selection of the day. A minute or so later I can see gaps opening up in front. Um, and I put in a big dig just to try to close some of them. Fortunately, again, I'm following in the wheels of someone, but this is a 500 watt effort for part of this just to close some of those gaps. It was really sketchy. Uh, there were essentially three lines on the road where the tire marks were, and you could ride on any of them, but getting across them was dangerous. There's more than a few people who crashed out just trying to get from one line to another or when lines sort of converged. And even sitting in the wheels isn't particularly easy. Uh, Surge is going off the front and suddenly you're hitting 500 watts just trying to stick in the wheels. So we're about at the third of the way through the first gravel section. We've been going at this for about five minutes now. Um, and this ends up being the final selection. There's about 11 of us in this group. Um, a couple of the really big hitters, Tom Baxter, who won the year, the whole series the year before. Mike Davies, who's a former national time trial champion. Louis Vanderberg in the uh, transitions kit, two riders ahead of me. He's a fantastic sprinter. This is, this is a really significant field. I'm not entirely sure how I made my way across to it. It felt like I was sort of sitting on the back and then jumping from group to group uh, as gaps opened up ahead, so I kind of got lucky, I think. You can see here how sketchy it is. Um, for some reason or other, I try to cross over to the left, but realising there's not enough space, I try to get over to the right again. Uh, and you just can't, you can't go over that centre line without jumping or you're going to lose a wheel. And of course, while you're distracted trying to figure out if you're about to crash, all of a sudden a surge will go off the front and then you're pumping 300, 400 watts just trying to stick with it. I think now's a good time to call out Darren Hicks just coming up on the right. Darren Hicks is our one-legged Olympian. Uh, this man's got more power in one leg than most of us have in two. On top of that, he's a top bloke and a fantastic bike handler. So always watch out for him. He's uh, the king of the long bomb. Uh, you can never let him get up the road because he can just hold it forever. All right, so we're 10 minutes into this gravel section and I've got no idea what's going on. The brake was still up. Turns out the breakaway had been pulled back right at the very beginning of this gravel section, which I'd completely missed. So we're 16 minutes into this gravel sector and you can see Mike ahead of me skittering around on this loose gravel crap. It's really taxing just trying to concentrate enough to stay up. And you end up having to sort of trade off a bit between the security of being able to see where you're going, so sitting out in the wind a bit, and hoping to maybe get a bit of a draft by sitting in the wheels. But if you're sitting in the wheels, it's just the most terrifying thing in the world because you've got no grip, you don't know what the guy ahead of you is going to do, and you don't know what the road surface is going to be, you know, 10 metres up the road. So it's, uh, it's an interesting trade-off. But finally, after about 17 or 18 minutes, we get off the gravel uh, and back onto the lovely bitumen. Um, and we get a little bit of a reset. I thought for a moment someone was going to attack off the front um, and I tried to chase it down, uh, but pretty quickly realised that everyone was exhausted as me. 
This is also when I started taking stock uh, of who was here, and I realised we have four rocket riders in this group. We've got Edwin up the front, we've got Mike Davies uh, just here in the blue helmet, we had Darren Webb and we had one other who I actually can't remember his name. Uh, and so in a group of 11 where you've got four from one team, um, it's pretty obvious what their tactic's going to be, isn't it? They're going to fire a rider up the, off the front, uh, and as soon as we bring that person back, they're going to fire the next one up. Uh, and I mean, to start with, they didn't really hit us. They started pulling on the front, which I figure if there's four of you in a break of 11, uh, you kind of got a bit of responsibility. Um, keep, keep the chasing peloton at bay. I'll have a bit of a conference here, and I'm thinking maybe they're talking tactics, but uh, no, it's just an opportunity to share some food. And it's actually not for a good five minutes before the first person attacks, and oddly enough, it's not someone from Rocket. Someone from USG goes um, with Mike Davies on his wheel, and as soon as I see Mike Davies going up, I've got to chase it. But fortunately, Edwin closes it down for me. Uh, I can't believe this. This is, um, this is a dream come true. I see a dangerous attack going off the front with a good time trialist, and his teammate pulls him back. Jeff Linder from NorCal Cycling is spinning in his turbo trainer. Louis Vandenberg in the transitions driveway kit decides to get on in on the action. Again, a rocket rider on his wheel, um, but nothing really comes of it. A few minutes later, rocket's been pulling on the front a bit. Um, uh, the fourth rocket rider goes for an attack off the front. Uh, as soon as he goes, I figure I'm going to have to chase because no one else is. Um, but Edwin picks up the pace again. Um, I'm waiting in the wheel a little bit to see if anyone else is going to pull through and chase him down. Um, but the pace is going up and you can see Edwin starting to pull some to pull some watts. So, I mean, he's not really going all out, but he's certainly not soft pedaling either. Uh, this is fantastic. Um, I'm just going to sit in this and see what happens. He's asking people to pull turns going through, but I'm not sure why. Uh, it's his teammate up the front, so as long as he's doing the work, that's fantastic. Edwin eventually does pull off and I do what feels like a pretty long turn to bring this guy back but you can see I'm only doing 120 watts it's it's pretty it's been pretty obvious from pretty early on that he wasn't going full gas um, and hey look here comes the rocket train two rocket guys again on the front chasing their teammate um, and what's not to like all right so we're coming into the second gravel sector here this one's not quite as long but the surface isn't quite as good uh, we've got Edwin on the front and Alex Jarvis just in front of me. Um, I didn't really know these guys at the time. This is the first time I'd raced against uh, either of them more than once. Um, it turns out Alex is super strong, particularly in the climbs and in some of the longer longer rides. Um, and Edwin's just a machine. He can go forever. Anyway, since I made it into this break, things have actually been going pretty well for me. I haven't had to do too much work chasing things down. Um, and they really should have been attacking me. They know I'm a sprinter. Um, I won the first round in a sprint. Um, and so finally, after about five minutes on this gravel section, some attacks go. And once again, Rocket closes them down. Um, here comes Edwin closing a gap in front of me. Um, and I haven't really had to put in too much of a dig. Haven't had to spend any matches to, to see this one off. Uh, but unfortunately, this is where the easy ride kind of ends. Uh, for the last couple of minutes, we've been rolling turns pretty nicely. Um, and then finally, Edwin throws down the absolute hammer of an attack. Edwin goes up, uh, Alex Jarvis goes after him, and there's two rocket guys in front of me, and they're not going to chase. Um, so now I've got to do something about it. I push my way through and really give it some beans. Um, and let me tell you, this hurt. Uh, 600 watts, 700 watts. Uh, Alex and Edwin up the road are just so strong with this kind of attack. They can hold this and sustain this. Um, and I, I can't let him go. Uh, just if, if the two of them get together up the road, that's that's game over for the rest of us. With three rocket riders who are absolutely never going to work, well, so I think, um, with the team made up the road. Um, and no one else is looking like coming through. I'm looking around a bit. Everyone's either in the wheels or off the back. Um, Darren Hicks, uh, he's been he had a flat right at the very beginning of this. But that's all right because I get up onto Alex's wheel, but. Oh no, just as I catch up with Alex, he lets Edwin's wheel go, uh, and I've got nothing. I've, I've closed this, it's been a minute at 600 watts, and I try to pull through to keep closing this gap, but that's it, I'm blown up at 190 beats a minute. Um, you know, there's, there's my biggest match of this race, gone. Uh, and at this point, I'm looking around for someone to help, someone to come through, um, and everyone else is just, well, they're all going to look at me, they're not going to want me to burn everything up because uh, they know they're not going to want to take me to the end um, and unfortunately that means that Edwin's just eking out that gap ahead of us 
So I think after flicking the elbows a bit like a chicken for a while, I decide to put my head down and just see if I can tap out threshold for a bit, maybe keep the gap steady and then hopefully someone else will come through a little bit later. Um, and I mean, for the rest of the people in this group, it's, it's the right idea. I mean, Edwin didn't get points in the first round, so they're not worried about him on GC. Um, probably most of the guys here are thinking about stage wins more than GC. Uh, and since they've got the, the overall series leader sitting on the front doing the work, they're kind of not needing to do anything. Uh, finally, Alex comes through and gives me a turn. Uh, but, you know, by now the damage has pretty much been done. Edwin's probably got 20 or 30 seconds. Uh, and given how close we are to the finish line, he can probably hold that for quite some time. I pull through for another turn. And to give you some idea of just how rough this is, my handlebars had actually slipped and you can see me readjusting them um, you can see the GoPro camera sort of starting to point to the sky a bit more. This surface is really rough on your bikes. A few minutes later, a few more turns, uh, and I get a little bit of help from USG. Um, and this time, though, Rocket's uh, playing the team game really well. Um, I think this is uh, possibly Webby. He's coming through and running interference. I'm not having that, so I'm going to go through to the front and try to, try to keep the momentum going. Uh, but unfortunately, that just leaves me working on the front for another couple of minutes. And in fact, I do the lion's share of the work for the next four or five minutes. Louis gives me one turn. He comes through for his second turn here. Um, but other than that, I've been the only one really chasing here. And Alex comes through to the front. I'm thinking that maybe we're going to have a good pull from him. Uh, but that's not what he's interested in. Um, and instead of that, he uh, goes on the attack. And you've seen from how strong he was going across to Edwin in that first attack, that just how strong he is. Um, so I absolutely have to close this one down myself. Again, Louis, who's been the only other one who's really interested in contributing to this chase, he's just finished a turn on the front, he's not going to be able to do it. And ultimately it comes down to me, so I spend another match to bring him back. We finally get back onto the bitumen, uh, and the pace goes completely out of the chase. Uh, no one's doing any work, so I decide to throw in a few fake sprints, see if I can't convince someone to come through and pull a turn. But they're not falling for that, so I give it another go, still no one, no one comes through. Uh, and I end up stuck on the front. Fortunately, no one's attacking, so I can just sort of wheel it back to 200 watts and roll through watching everyone, seeing what they're doing. And given how slow it is, I think I'd probably rather be on the front at 200 watts than potentially boxed in, but in the draft. And you can kind of see the, the advantage of being on the front when it's this slow, um, just here, because when someone eventually does go, I can see him coming. Louis comes through for a really strong attack. I think this was his last big effort. But I saw him coming and was able to wind it up pretty quickly to get back into his draft. Now at this point I'm not particularly familiar with the finish, um, but I know we're pretty close, so I don't want to be far from the front. Uh, but unfortunately, unfortunately, because I chased Louis down, I actually end up on the front. Um, uh, and so instead of having a lead out, I end up having to kind of lead myself out. Now we're going at about 40 k's an hour, sitting at threshold. I hear a crash happening behind me, unfortunately. I think Louis and Alex took each other out. Um, and hearing that and seeing the finish line, uh, I just lit it up uh, and was able to stay away. I think uh, the other sprinters were probably held up by the crash um, and I ended up finishing second with daylight to third. Uh, it's a huge strong ride from Edwin, finishing, I don't know, he finished a minute ahead of us in the end. Um, massive props to him for that. Uh, and the rest of his team certainly played it well, interfering with any chase attempt attempts, but um, good to have another podium in the bag. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that one and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.